I can't tell you how many of you have told me that yes, you have a fish finder, but you only use it for depth and temperature. Guys, these things have powerful features that can put you on the fish. So whether you're using 2D, down imaging, side imaging, even FFS, if you're not grasping how the frequencies correlate or work alongside of those sonar cones and you don't understand your fish finder, they could be costing you valuable fish. So let me break down sonar for you so you can use it to your advantage and outfish your friends. So sonar stands for sound navigation and arranging. Essentially what you're doing is you're sending sound waves down below the surface and once they hit something, they return back up to the transducer. It then interprets it and plots it on your graph. So when you hit a hard surface below the water, you're gonna get a harder, stronger return. And when you hit something softer like mud, you're going to get a weaker return. And so this video is really going to help you understand how sonar works. Because a lot of these newer fish finders, they come with auto tuning functions right outside of the box, but it is doing it for you. And so if you could figure out how it works, you can actually fine tune these settings and make them work to your advantage. So let me share with you how different frequencies will interact with objects below the surface. So frequency measures the amount of sound waves passing by a specific point each second. This is measured in hertz. Modern fish finders, they operate at much higher frequencies, right? You got your kilohertz, which is gonna be thousands of hertz, and then you got your megahertz, which are gonna be millions of hertz. So a lot of these fish finders are actually going to operate in a lot of different frequencies, right? It's gonna give them a lot of versatility. So let me break down for you high frequencies and how it interacts with objects below the water and low frequencies. So low frequencies are actually gonna travel further in the water because they have less interference, and so they're gonna maintain more of their energy and be able to go further. So this makes them very ideal for detecting objects in very deep water, right? You're gonna have a very large scanning cone, and so you're gonna be able to cover a larger surface. Then next you have your high frequency waves. Now you're gonna get a lot more increased detail, however it's gonna be at the cost of coverage. They're gonna interact more with underwater objects and they're gonna give you a more crisp, clear image. So this is really important for those live imaging units, right? Because you're gonna need in the megahertz to be able to capture that fine detail that allows you to see that continuous movement on your screen. However, to operate at a very high frequencies, you're gonna need a lot more power to generate that, which means it's gonna drain your battery faster, you're gonna need a larger battery to power these type of units. So in order to get these high frequency waves and to get all this power that you need, you're gonna need upgraded transducers, you're gonna need upgraded graphs, that's why this stuff gets so expensive. So essentially you have three types of fish finder frequencies, right? You're gonna have your single frequency fish finder this is going to be a fixed frequency across your entire scanning process. And so you're going to be able to tell that there's some type of structure down there, but it's going to be really hard to determine whether that's a fish or if it's something else. So these are going to be generally less expensive. You're going to find them for sub $100. And so that's what you're looking at when you're looking at a single frequency fish finder. Next, we have the dual frequency fish finder. So the dual frequency, as you can imagine, you're going to have a higher frequency, you're going to have a lower frequency. And a lot of times you can either toggle back and forth or on some units, you can actually see one that's low and want to tie side by side. And then you have your multi-frequency fish finders. This is going to be where a lot of us land. So this is going to be your CHIRP technology. I think CHIRP stands for compressed high intensity radiated pulse, right? And so this is going to send a, a variety of, of frequencies down. And then when it comes back up, it's going to interpret that for that really fine, crisp image. So these are actually highly effective. And so you're looking for an entry level fish finder. I recommend, it's the one I started out with, with just the Garmin Striker 4, right? This is going to run you like $140 on Amazon right now. And of course, you got to get a battery. So you might, you, you'll probably be into an entry level fish finder, Chirp technology, for like 250 bucks. So if you're interested in that entry level fish finder, I will throw the links in the description below. But now let me walk you through some key takeaways. Takeaway number one, you know, recreational fish finders typically run in two type of frequencies. You got your low frequency is going to be 50 kilohertz, and then your high frequency is going to run around 200 kilohertz. And your Chirp technology is going to run in frequencies between 150 and 240 kilohertz. And so, so this is going to be really great for your inland kind of fishing. A lot of probably what you and I do like fishing under 600 feet. Chirp is going to be perfect for you. And then you have your transducers, right? And the reason that there's such a large span of cost there is going to be for two reasons. One, the frequencies that they use and two, power. Since we talked about transducer frequencies, transducer power is really the strength of that sonar signal. This is why your FFS forward-facing sonar is going to be so expensive. And then you have side scan and down 
scan. This is what I run right now. I have a Garmin UHD 92 SV and it has down view and side view, which is Garmin's down scan and side scan. And so these frequencies are gonna run around 455 kilohertz to 800 kilohertz. So now let's talk sonar cones in relation to kilohertz. So especially for down view, if you're running 455 kilohertz for down view, your cone is gonna be a wider cone, right? Based off of what we just learned. Now, if you're running up to 800 kilohertz, your cone is going to be narrower. So you're gonna see less. However, it's gonna be a finer image for you. So remember, lower the kilohertz, wider the cone, less detail, higher the kilohertz or megahertz, you're gonna have a shorter cone, however, more detail. And if you have a fish finder and you're scratching head why everyone else's image looks so much clearer than yours well i got the video for you why my fish finder image is clearer than yours you can check that out right there thanks for watching guys i'll see you